Hello, I'm Ralph Kimball. This is a pre-recorded Zoom intended to introduce beginner pre-cancel collectors to how to organize one's collection and how to use the PSS computer program and, and computer database to make sense out of pre-cancels. And hopefully at the end of this Zoom, you'll decide that it's not so complicated after all. So what I wanna do is encourage you, first of all, since you're using a computer uh, to watch this video, you, are, you show some um, familiarity with the using computers. So make sure that you get the free software if you have not done so already from www.precancels.com and download the, the free software. The free software actually contains everything that you need to go forward. It contains the uh, town and type database and the bureau database with an important caveat, please listen to this. The free software has everything, as I say, but it is restricted to the state of Alabama. So if all you're interested in is Alabama, then you are a big winner. You get everything for free, but uh, virtually everybody else collects the rest of the states or some of the other states. So uh, in order to get those other states, you then go back to the um, publications page on the pre-cancels website and purchase the authorization for the town and type database. You can also uh, purchase a separate authorization for the bureau database, but we're not talking about the bureau uh, database today. We're talking about the town and type database. Inside the town and type uh, database uh, are all 43,000 entries and uh, all sorts of uh, other resources. If you go to the pre-cancel folder in, on the uh, C drive that after you've done the installation, go into the pre-cancel folder. It's sitting right there on the C drive. And there are a number of PDF files that are very useful. One of them, and one that we're gonna look at extensively today because it's there and it's really a valuable resource to, to be used in conjunction with the uh, computer program is the introduction to the full printed catalog. And the introduction, what I'll do now is I'm gonna to go to screen sharing and uh, give us a chance to look at the, uh, okay, first of all, we'll go to desktop one. There we go. And I always have to turn off, it's a little confusing. I always have to turn off the overlay window that, that exists there. So what you should see now is uh, two kind of windows that are on my desktop. There's a bunch of little tiny stamp icons and we're gonna look at those to get an idea of how to use the database and how to identify what those are. And then over on the right is the opening screen of the town and type database program itself. But before we actually dive into any of that, I want to um, show you the, what I just mentioned. And I'm gonna bring that up on the desktop, I'm, uh, it, which is the introduction to the town of type catalog, which is embedded in the, the pre-cancel folder. Now, uh, there's a lot of interesting information there. We're not gonna go through all of it. There's some of it is, um, historical, some of it is, you might say technical in terms of how pre-cancels are made. But the, the thing that's really valuable and very relevant to today is the style chart. And so I'm gonna walk you through a little of the style chart right now because it provides such a valuable structured uh, view of, of pre-cancels that it's worthwhile getting to, to know it. You don't have to understand all of it today, but you need to, to know that this exists and need to go be, be able to go back to it. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm in Adobe Reader, one of the things that's useful to do in Adobe Reader is to actually use the find function. And so I'm gonna uh, type uh, command F right here and you see a little find window come up. And I'm gonna uh, type in the, uh, in order to jump to the style chart, I'm gonna type in the number of the very first of the styles, which happens to be 31. And uh, that jumps into footnote 31. Uh, I guess there's a, oh, there we go. <laughs> took, took three hits of the 31 to get there. So this is the first page of the style chart. Now, wh what is all this? I've explained this in some other videos that you may have looked at, but it's, it's really 
important to just get this uh, 10,000 foot tour of, of this because it, it, as it begins to make sense, it's gonna make the whole subject so much simpler. These uh, pre-cancel images here are the so-called bureau plates and they all have, they're all two digit numbers uh, ranging from 31 as you can see down to 87 uh, at the bottom there. And these are the pre-cancels that were supplied by the United States Postal Service for very, very large volume users, uh, typically who would uh, be like maybe a big uh, company like Sears and Roebuck or, or uh, Montgomery Wards or one of the others uh, would uh, commit to needing 250,000 or more uh, pre-cancels. And so the, the, bureau, the, the Bureau said, gee, uh, rather than sending out a device to the local post office, which would be the normal process, we'll actually incorporate the printing of these bureau pre-cancels directly up in, in the, the, the bureau's uh, printing operation that where the stamps themselves are printed. There was effectively the big sheets of stamps went through two, two prints operations, one for the stamp and then one for these, these so-called bureau plates. Anyway, the bureau plates, uh, first of all, are fairly common because of the very large volumes that, that most of them required. But secondly, they are really, really crisp and dark and well-centered and very, very readable. So that's one of the, the attractions, I guess you could say, of the bureau plates is that these are uh, readily collectible and they're readily identifiable. You rarely have to, to squint and try to figure out the, the pre-cancel itself. So if we go down through these, and I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time on this, even though it sounds like I'm about to. Um, these, these first three are the so-called experimental ones that were done on, on the uh, Washington Franklin uh, stamps, a few of them just from these three cities. Um, then the so-called classic styles are these 40s and, and, and uh, 50s. And then the more modern styles are the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 80s. Uh, one of the things that I will point out and because we'll encounter one or two of these in my examples, is that the, the 60s are more widely spaced. You'll see that compared to the 70s, the 70s are more narrowly spaced. And then the 80s are equivalently spaced pretty narrowly, but um, you'll notice that the states themselves do not have uh, any punctuation and they're not spelled out. So they're all little two letter um, abbreviations. And so it turns out that these are not difficult to tell apart. And characteristically, these are in rather tiny print compared to most of the other pre-cancels that you encounter. That is to say the 60 ones through the later ones. Let's go to the next page here. Um, let's see, what I want to do is, I guess I'll do it this way. Um, following each of the graphical pages, there is a page that's often helpful that describes the uh, characteristics of the typeface and, and the layout. Uh, it's not so necessary uh, when you're looking at the bureau plates because they're easily distinguishable. But now let's go to the next group. And these are pre-cancels not provided by the, the bureaus, the, the operation of, of the USPS or the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, but rather these are devices that were meant for coils and uh, therefore, these uh, styles from 101 down to whatever the one at the bottom is, it's, it's partly off the screen, um, are only intended for coils. And so if you are wondering if you've got one of these, and, and again, these are pretty distinctive, and especially the, the lower ones, 141 through the others, they, they're typically sideways on the stamp, and they, they come with these kind of boxy enclosures, which is, which is not found on, on virtually any other actual pre-cancels. Most, pre, most uh, cancels that have boxy enclosures that don't look like these are actually package rollers and, and they are not considered to be pre-cancels. But anyway, these, if, if you think you've got one of the city type coils, you better have a coil in your hand or it's not a city type coil, let me put it that way. Uh, again, there's uh, um, explanations of each of these. Then, we get to a very interesting and important section. We're going upward in the, <clears throat> the numbers, excuse me. These are the so-called printed types that are done on electroplates. These are typically 100 subject plates that 
uh, are put into a printing press. Uh, they may be typeset or electroplates that, that might be produced on a, a linotype machine. But in any case, the, these devices are uh, very nicely printed. They're, they tend to be very dark, very crisp, very contrasty. And this is a popular area. Uh, many of these are also reasonably common. Uh, at least the styles on, on the larger cities are, are common. There's some that are rare. But these are, are typically easy to identify uh, with no other real consideration other than the fact that they're very dark, very, very crisp, and very, very well presented. So keep that in mind when you're wondering if something uh, it happens to be one of these uh, 200 um, printed styles. And again, we look at some style descriptions, somewhat useful. There's, here's, there's more of these. There's an important class of these printed styles that come on the, the, from the printing presses, you might say, in each of the major cities. And these are the ones with the, the double lines above and below. And you'll see that, that there's a range of, of style numbers from 241 to 252. And these are called double line electros. And the double line electros are uh, eagerly sought at, sought after, let me put it that way, uh, and are a very popular collecting area. Uh, one of the, the interesting things is that it's really hard to get a complete, complete coll general collection of double line electrodes. Uh, just why that's the case, I don't know, but I don't know, even the most advanced collectors don't have, have them all. <laughs> that makes you feel, feel better. Now, one thing I should point out is that, say for the example, the 241, the 241 style is relatively common, but it doesn't come just from Elgin, Illinois. What we have to do here in this printout and also in the computer program is show an example of the style that we use as the standard example for A241. So we can see a little bit later that there's a fair number of cities that sport the, the 241 pre-cancel. And that's why when you bring up uh, an illustration of some other town with a 241, I can't think of one off, off the top of my head right now, um, it will, it will show to the Elgin, Illinois example in the little picture. Don't be misled by that or dismayed by that. It's because we must do that. There, there are some styles that have hundreds or even a couple of thousand towns with that same style. And we don't have a, an illustration for every single one of those because they wouldn't differ by anything other than the spelling, you might say, of the town and, and the type. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, again, we have the explanation of those styles. Uh, here are the remaining electroplates that go all the way up to number 284. Again, these are very um, nicely printed, easy to read, typically. Then we go into the really interesting areas above the printed ones. And everything else from number 401 that you see here to the very end of all these styles are hand stamps. And it's, they started off with rubber hand stamps. The earliest rubber hand stamps were all in this orientation that was really intended to be like this right on the stamp. So if the stamp was in a normal definitive stamp, the uh, cancel was reading up in this case or possibly reading down. And, and so, the, and, and one of the things that you'll find in some of the catalogs is that hand stamp varieties or positions maybe is the way to say that, are not typically called out separately because of the fact that uh, rubber hand stamps, they could be a, uh, anywhere from a, there are a few that are two subject hand stamps, but many of them are 10 subject hand stamps or, or 25s. Uh, they can be rotated at the whim of the person who's doing the canceling at that moment. And so there's not a, a particularly uh, important distinction for the uh, variations in the, in the orientation, but there is for the printed ones that we looked at a, a minute ago. Those are typically uh, collected separately and cataloged separately. So you will see if we look at this, it'll talk a little bit about the various faces of, of those. Let's keep going now with rubber hand stamps. We're still in the 400s. Now, what I wanna uh, point out here is something that I, hopefully no one's offended by this. I call it a, this a catechism that you have to learn. Here, here's the catechism that you need to <laughs> repeat every time you open your pre cancel album. 400s, 500s, lines and bars. 400s, 500s, lines and bars. 
What I mean by that is that if you are looking and trying to identify a precancel and you can see that the lines uh, above and below the, the printing extend all the way to the edge of the stamp and, and maybe even show a little bit of the, the one uh, from the next stamp if it's a little off center, those are lines, continuous lines. Those hand stamps are 400s. And, or let me put it this way, the 400s all have lines. And the 500s and 600s above that have bars. And so it, it, it's really important. You can end up by going down a rat hole, trying to figure out a, a pre-cancel and suddenly you realize, oh my goodness, my example has bars and I'm looking at the 400s. It ain't a 400 if it's got bars. So, so 400s, 500s, lines and bars. You're gonna hear me say that a few times because uh, it's pretty important actually to, to remember that. Here's a uh, the remaining rubber hand stamps with lines, 400s, lines. And these uh, are a, sort of a larger style. Now, one of the things about hand stamps is that th they frequently are not as crisp and as readable and as well presented as the printed varieties or the, the electroplates or the bureaus. Some of these are pretty good if it's been freshly inked and, and somebody was being careful, the impression can look pretty dark, but many times the hand stamp impressions are awful or they're indistinct or they're twisted or something. So that's another indicator, by the way, that, that you've got a hand stamp um, uh, when the, the printing quality isn't as great. So let's keep on going. The, the, the 400s and now the, the, here we have the bars, the rubber hand stamps and the bars. And so, uh, we, those go all the way through the 500s and into the 600s. There's quite a, a few of these, and we'll encounter a number of these in our little examples. But what was interesting is the word rubber up here. The problem is that uh, the rubber hand stamps were the first technology that was employed for, uh, out to all the local post offices, thousands and thousands of, of these post offices. I mean, we have 20,000 post offices that use pre-cancels. But the rubber itself became degraded and was, uh, they actually recommended that you, cl you clean the clogged ink out of the, these hand stamps with uh, things like gasoline. Well, the gasoline ended up by corrupting the rubber and there's some amazing examples of bizarrely distorted, almost unrecognizable hand stamps. So uh, in the, uh, about 1932, the uh, USPS decided that the rubber experiment wasn't a good idea. And so uh, you can see there's a lot of them. And then they had just started on, on the 600 rubber hand stamps with bars. We're still going with hand stamps with bars. But one of the things you'll discover and you might wonder, well, why are some of the 600s rather rare? Well, it's because many of them were issued just before the change to metal hand stamps. And these are now starting with the 700s. The 700s are called white hand electros, uh, and, and these are very common, uh, and you'll, you'll see them everywhere in your collection. The, the white hand electros are um, metal, and they replaced the earlier ones. And that's why some of the 600s are rare. It's not that they didn't use pre cancels, it's because they replaced the, the device. A few towns kept on using them, but some of them are so rare that. Uh, we know that they were sent to the post office, but there's a few that nobody has ever seen an example of. So, you know, maybe you'll get lucky and find something on eBay that's, that's unusual. Anyway, uh, those are the white hand metal hand stamps. Here's the narrow hand electros uh, that have lines and those remain in the 700s. Then the, finally the technology changed to what it's still used today, which are the vinyl devices, the vinyl hand stamps. And these are often 10 subject uh, devices. And I'm, I'm gonna call your attention to some of these here um, uh, because many of them are really similar and they can get very frustrating. So for example, let's study this page a little bit here. These are the 800s from 801 down to whatever, 826. Um, you'll see that uh, and on the next page, it, it actually says this in writing, but I can point this out. The, it, all the 801s to 810s have a comma after the town. Remember that because that's the only way 
to distinguish these devices from the ones down here, typically. So if you look at, uh, say, 801 and, say, something like 818, they are in between lines. It'll say on the next page, eight to nine millimeters in diameter, or, or separated, that is, and three millimeter tall, or, or in some cases, 2.5 millimeter tall characters. And the punctuation is the same except for this comma at the end of the town. And so you've got to uh, kind of keep your radar going for that when you're just trying to distinguish some of these vinyl types. And <laughs> I mean, it's sort of ridiculous to say it this way, but the comma is the most important character in all the pre cancels because it's the only thing that you've got to distinguish some of these. And there's quite a few of them that could be confused with each other. I think um, if we look down through this, uh, 803 and 820 are pretty much the same. Uh, 804 and 821. Um, anyway, and I think 806 and 823, the only different, 807 and this other one that's hiding under my, um, under the display there. Um, the only, only difference is that comma. So I'm, I'm, I know I'm beating this to death, but uh, keep your radar going for that. Anyway, uh, oh, and, and then the, the companion page, the style, style descriptions are, are fairly helpful. You'll see, for example, that the, the 802 and the 819 have three millimeter block caps, but the only difference is that comma. All right, anyway, I think we're pretty much done with all this. Uh, some of them, the really modern ones go clear up to the end and they, they have rather idiosyncratic styles that, that, that don't fit quite as neatly into the various uh, categories, but uh, most of them are pretty recognizable. Okay, so that's a tour of this really important document. Uh, I can get rid of it. And let's actually try to figure out how to use the PSS computer program to identify some interesting pre-cancels. I've chosen a town I'm going to bring up the first example. I've chosen a town that uh, has a really useful representative, uh, representative set of precancels spanning many of these little categories. And it, the nice thing about Fresno, California, is that the, all of these precancels are, are readily uh, obtainable. I think I've got the complete set of, of all of these. I'm not going to show them all to you right now, but you'll get the idea. So uh, how do we use the, the, the PSS computer program? We open it, it starts off with this blank screen and you can type in, for example, which we will do, Fresno. And in the twinkling, you get back a list of all the Fresnos. Now, careful, one of the things you'll notice something that I didn't know is way down at the bottom of that list, there's actually a Fresno in Texas. And so just, uh, we're not gonna get confused by that. It's a there seems to be an 828 type that doesn't exist in the other um, in California, but I'm going to limit th this to California just because that's the way, way to do this. And we can see that we have the various possible precancels from Fresno. And if you poke down through the list, you'll see uh, in the lower left corner a representation of each of those cancels. Now, I want to return to something, get rid of that one because that, that doesn't make my point. Uh, for example, we look at the 455, you're trying to say, well, why does it show Leon, Kansas? Well, it gets back to what I said before, that there are many towns that use the 455 pre-cancel. In fact, it's worth saying how this worked. It, it's when a postmaster applied for a, a pre-cancel device, uh, the postmaster typically didn't get a choice as to exactly the style, didn't get to shop around. And uh, what the, the USPS determined by the length of the town name and by the availability of certain contractors, third parties, that produced these devices, the uh, device would then be sent out. Well, the 455 device was a, a, a fairly popular device. And, and so rather than showing every single 455, like the one from Fresno and so on, we have to show the example. And the example chosen happens to be a nice clear one from Leon. Let me, let me actually do something here just to, to make this final point. I'm gonna clear this query out for a second and go up here to the, up to the upper right and type 455. And, and just to give you a sense of how many of the towns were supplied 
by, by this contractor who made the 455 devices for the, the Postal Service. And you'll see down at the lower right here, goodness, uh, this 455 device was supplied to 200 towns. And it turns out that there's uh, one town that had um, uh, a mistake and an error in the device and they had to, to um, provide a couple of extra copies. That's why there's actually 203 types uh, there. But, uh, and you could scroll down through this and figure out which town that was, kind of interesting. But in any case, what I'm trying to tell you here is that the, two, the 455 device is, is a re reasonably common one. It's not by any, any means the most common. They're the the uh, 841s, I think, uh, have thousands of towns. Anyway, let me type here while I can do that at the same time as I'm talking. Okay, we're back to Fresno. So the way to figure out which one of these it is, is not to poke down through here and try to remember which is which. There's an extremely useful feature, which is at the heart of this whole program. And once you have brought up something like this Fresno, look down here at this little button, all Fresno types. So poke the button and guess what you get? You get a depiction of all of the Fresno types at the same time and laid out nicely in, in order. So uh, our little investment that we made in going through the, the style chart actually uh, should make much more sense here. Remember now, that the ones under 100, 61, 71, and 81 in this case are bureau styles. And clearly our example that we're gonna try to figure out here is not a bureau. Um, the bureaus are, have these rather tiny uh, fonts. And, and these, are, these uh, uh, pictures are relatively to scale, but don't go crazy you know, measuring this to the, to the micron. Uh, they're very indicative. And so for example, we will see a little bit later that the difference between the, the line spacing on the 61 and the 71 is significant. And, and that's how you tell them apart. But, here, but anyway, here are the bureaus, the three bureaus. Here is the only example from Fresno of a printed style. Remember the printeds are 200s. And we've actually got one that we'll, we'll bring up and you'll see how nice and perfect it is as, as a strike. Now, what's the catechism? 400s, 500s, lines, and bars. 400s, 500s, lines, and bars. What's this? It ain't a line. These are bars on this particular example. And you can see the, the end of the bars um, uh, here. And so whatever you might think of these 400s here, they, it's not one of those. You might even wonder if it's the 479, forget it, it's not. Th those are lines. So we have a, a kind of a nice, selection of bars. So let's start with the 531 and see if that could be it. Well, no, the 531 is this little squashy uh, type here that doesn't look anything like our example. Let's go to, to the next one. The 547 is a, is a characteristic type that you'll see quite a lot. It's uh, tall letters that pretty much fill the space between the bars. No, nah, not that one. Hmm. 561 is possible. Let's sort of hold that in our thoughts for a second and just look at the last of these bar examples. And this one is disqualified for a couple of reasons. The main one is that th this is a sans serif font over here on the 564, and this is a serif font. And it's not a 701, it's not a, me a metal hand stamp type. Uh, mainly because the 701 is a very common type that you'll recognize a lot. And it has this kind of spacing. The, the uh, state and the town are relatively close together. Pretty, pretty good spacing above and below. Don't measure this with a, you know, a, to a 10th of a millimeter. It's not that accurate there. Remember now that some, some contractor is producing these and is and producing hundreds of these or, or more for different towns. So there's gonna be slight variations here, but they'll all look like this. So what we're, and none of the, the, these uh, so-called local L types look anything like our example. So make a long story short, it's gotta be a 561 and look carefully. The 561 has uh, serifs and a rather distinctive type style and a letter that you should look at that kind of seals the deal here. Look at the R on, on the standard example on Butler and look at the R on Fresno. Okay, 
that this this one here is a 561 for sure. So I'm gonna uh, let's see, let's close that. One of the things we could do is I could label that 561, but there's no point. All right, so let's look at another Fresno. What do we have here? Um, so this one is another handstand of some sort. It's not a bureau. It's certainly not this 261 example. But in this case, it's got lines. And it's, uh, you can be pretty sure there are lines because the, the, the things that are lines go clear to the edge. Now, you know, what do we have here? Well, it's probably a perforation that is uh, interrupting this line. This is definitely a lines uh, one. So 400, 500 lines and bars. This is a 400 of some sort. So what do we have? Well, it's kind of obvious. <laughs> Um, it's got to be a 455 because both the 479 and the 490 have serifs. So that's another thing that you look for is look for sans serif as in our example and serifs uh, in, in, some, in both of these. And so this disqualifies the 479 and 490 instantly. And we're doing pretty well on conformance to this 455. You know, this is the case where, where don't uh, go crazy with the the spacing that you see on the standard example. This one's a little tighter in the standard example than you see here. It's a 455, believe me. And the other thing that's that's also useful to notice is that while there is uh, punctuation at the end of the state, and you can see it here, there's also in, in our example, there's punctuation, there's a comma at the end of the town. That's okay. So, so just because the standard example doesn't have the, the comma, um, in this case, uh, you, you need to be flexible and understand that. And I will say without, talking about every one of these, none of the others look like this. So there we go again, we've diagnosed two of them with pretty high confidence. Let's look at this one, another Fresno. Okay, little tiny type, no punctuation on the town. Very strong contrasty print. And none of the others look remotely like this except the bureaus. So the question is, and given that the scale is different on our example from the picture, are we looking at a 61 or a 71? It's not gonna be an 81, remember, because the 81s over here um, don't have any punctuation on the uh, state. So it's either a 61 or a 71. Well, it's a 71. And, and those of you who collect bureaus know this instantly, uh, but what you'll see here is that the 61s really have a, a nice fat space above, in between and below. And, and the, the spacing, you know, you can see this almost from a galloping horse. The, the spacing is, is pretty wide. So this is definitely a 71. This is a Fresno 71 and the Fresno 71. Now the, the, the type price, we're not gonna talk much about prices here, but the type price in this case is 15 cents. What that means is that if you look in the bureau catalog, for all the 71s from Fresno, uh, one of them will be the two cent. The, the uh, cheapest bureau from Fresno 71 type <laughs> is 15 cents. There might be some that are more expensive, but that's, that's the basis for the, the uh, type price that's shown in the town type catalog. It's the cheapest one of that type. Okay, let's do another Fresno. Okie dokie. And you know what I realize? I got my little notes here. I'm gonna open the second one at the same time. And that's good enough. And do it like this. Okay, so these are, okay, before you, you go crazy and try to guess the, the answers immediately, uh, just remind yourself what this is. This is a sans serif, very, especially the first one, very crisply presented, quacks like a printed type because it's so perfect in its uh, definition and contrast. And the second one, honestly, uh, doesn't share all those characteristics. It's definitely a different one. It, the type face is a bit larger. Um, the state is a little closer to the town and it's a little bit blurry, just blurry enough to make you think, well, that could be a hand stamp, a pretty nice hand stamp, but, but it doesn't have the, the real crisp characteristics of the top one. So let's look down and we see that none of the standard types uh, fit the bill. And we get down to these so-called local types that are 
produced and made in Fresno. That's what a local type is. It's, it's produced and made um, either by the, the, the post office or a contractor typically within the, the particular town that we're talking about. And the only ones that, that even look like this are these first two. These, uh, and lo and behold, the first one's a hand stamp and it's the one with a little bit larger type than the next one. And the, the uh, town and the state are closer together. So looks like we've got an L1HS hand stamp here. Nice, uh, 20 cent variety. Here we have a printed one, L2 typeset. That's what the TS means at the, at the end. And we can see that also fits the bill. It's a slightly better type, a $3 type, not bad. And it looks to me like it conforms pretty much exactly to the picture. And the nice thing, by the way, about the, the L types in each town is they are specific to the town. So you'll find all the L types in every town actually have the real town name on them. And that, that helps uh, identify some of these. Now, the remaining ones are so-called integral typesets. And I think we've got an example of an integral typeset a little bit later. But uh, what that means, by the way, is that the, uh, well, I, I'm not going to go into the, to the description of that right now. I, I'll get to that if, if we have an example of that one. OK, um, so let's do one more Fresno, or maybe a couple more Fresnos. It sort of makes the point. Fresno is a fun, a fun town to collect because th these types are not impossible to distinguish, and they're all relatively inexpensive, as I was saying before. So what do we have here? So back to the catechism. Is this lines, or is this bars? 400s, 500s, lines, and bars. Well, those are bars for sure. So it's gotta be a 500. So what do we have here? Well, it isn't the 531, little squishy, squashy type. Um, hmm, 547 looks like a real possibility. Hang on, let's sort of earmark that. We've already seen a 561 with a special little R in the, the, the serifs. And we, we also, um, the 564 happens to, the standard example happens to be in Fresno, which is convenient for us here. Um, but, and notice that the 564 is a smaller typeface, we think, and it doesn't have any punctuation at the end of Caliph. And this one clearly does dark green stamp, but it's clearly that one. So this is a 547. No two ways about it. 547, done deal. All right, let's see what else we got here. Aha, catching up with our little squashy uh, typeface that I've been um, insulting all the way along here. Sorry about that. Uh, so what do we have here? Is this lines or bars? It's bars. You can see the gap there. There's bars. So it's got to be a 500 hand stamp if it's a hand stamp. So what do we have? We have a little squashy type. Well, that looks pretty good. Little squashy type for sure. Notice, by the way, here's another example where the standard example, which is Dundee, does not show punctuation at the end of the town, but our example does. So you, you've got to, for, for these... Um, hand stamps, you've got to allow that difference. Not so on the 800, um, the 800 types, the vinyl, the vinyls. That, there's a case where the comma matters tremendously. I don't have any examples right, right here on this, this page, but I'll show you one or two more. Anyway, this is a 531 for sure. None of these other 500s look even vaguely like this. Uh, Fresno doesn't look like it, no punctuation, and these others are really different. Okay, got, we nailed another one. Let's see about this one. Ah, so here's one that uh, is interesting. And you might say, well, Ralph, you've been preaching lines and bars, lines and bars. What's going on here? What is this thing? Well, first of all, this is, we're going to discover that this is a 701. Uh, you'll see that uh, just looking at the various spacings and the presence of serifs on the various typefaces, uh, so let's look, let's review the ones that have serifs. Um, uh, this one is too big and there's too much spacing between the town, town type. The 701s, the reason I'm belaboring this is the 701s are real common. And, and you will like the, uh, you, you will recognize these, as I say, from a galloping horse because uh, there's a lot of these, just there's many hundreds of, of these 701s out there types. And so uh, we would see that as an opportunity to go look in the list for the 701s. So I'm not seeing any other ones that even come close to this. 
And so this will end up by being diagnosed as a 701 for sure. Fresno 701. Okay. I think we're just about done with Fresno's. Fresno's, Fresno's a nice town, I like Fresno. So here is the example I've talked about a few times. Uh, it's the only printed type from Fresno, other than the, this typeset down here that we looked at um, that was the local type. This is a USPS supplied printed type 261. And you'll see that uh, once again, we happen to luck out and the standard example in the all the 261s, no matter what it is, will show the Fresno example. So Fresno is particularly fortuitous because here, there it is. I mean, there's no two ways about this. This one is an exact match. This is a beautifully printed, centered, contrasty, nice pre-cancel. So anyway, that's a 261. See, this isn't so hard after all. All right, we're gonna go away from Fresno now, do a few other ones. Uh, I wanna look at Madeira. I think I've got another Madeira here also, yeah. Let me I'll put the two Madeiras over on the left side here, hide this example and go to Madeira, M-A-D-E-R-A. And there's not a whole bunch of types here. Let's see why this could even be interesting or difficult. So let's look at the various Madeira types. Now let's eliminate the ones that are, that are obviously not correct. It's not a 701. We just went through the whole harangue about 701s and in the, 70, the 701s are, um, have serifs on the typefaces and these Madeiras do not. We also have um, the 839 over on the right is definitely not it, nor are the 841s. Why is that? Because these high numbered uh, vinyls, these 800 types have two letter states with no punctuation. So that eliminates both of those. So now we're getting down to the short strokes here. Um, could it be an 801 or an L1 or an 819? So the difference here is that the 801, let's see, I think I decided that the L1 was not, oh yeah, here we go. This is an example. Of, <laughs> this is an example of seeing the forest for the trees, and so I hope you you sort of get the point here is that you can uh, drill in and and not and you can miss the big picture. Why is the L1 not one of these? Well, it's because the L1 is has the state C A L period, and both of the examples that we're looking at are caliph with a period. So it's none of these. We're left with only two. That, in, in the possible list, the 801 and the 819. Well, it's, and the, the two that we, that are our examples are different. If you look at the, the one cent green up at the top there, the letters are spaced in the town and the state looks about the same as the one below it. But the one below it, the letters are closer together. These are not the same device. These are definitely different devices. And we're left with only two choices for this, the 801 and the 819. Now, which one of the of those two, the 801 and the 819 have a spaced town in the pre-cancel and it's the 801. Notice that you've got to be a little bit flexible here because the, the line spacing doesn't look like our stamp exactly. There's going to be some variation in the line spacing. But also notice that we do have a comma at the end of the town and the 801s. And if you go back to the descriptions of the pre-cancels that I showed you from the, the catalog itself, all the, the low number eight, 800s up to eight, 810, I think it was, um, do have the comma at the end of the town. So, so there are two characteristics of this one cent green here that, that say that it's an 801. There's the spacing in the town and the comma at the end, even though the line spacing might make you keep looking. It, it is an 801. And the same uh, kind of reasoning is true for the 819. And the 819, the two center over there on the left is interesting. It's, it's clearly the more compact spacing of the letters in the town. But there's a thing that looks a little bit like a comma 
or something at the end of that. Well, it's not a comma. It's it's uh, some sort of inking uh, anomaly. You see that there's some little bit of messy inking going on there. That is not a comma there. This is an 819 for sure. And so you, you do have to ha have a little bit of adjustment, a little bit of flexibility. I do see people, and I don't, I understand this. I think I used to do it myself, measuring things to the micron and saying, I don't know what I've got here. It doesn't look like the example, or it doesn't look, you know, there's something that, that doesn't, doesn't work. Anyway, so that's a little more sophisticated example. Let's get rid of these. And where are we now? Aha, I'm gonna show you three of these at once. We'll go kind of buzzing through this, these little examples pretty quickly here. Let's bring up some Los Angeles. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Gotta be careful with this mouse. Don't want to have everything go poof. All right. Uh, I think I'm not going to mess with it too much more here. Uh, let's go to Los Angeles. P E L E S. And Los Angeles has a bunch of types, but these are integral hand stamps, or they could be typesets, but these are not typesets. These are all hand stamps. And the reason that I know that they're integrals is that they have the user, in this case, all three of them is Sears Roebuck, SRC, and they're called integral hand stamps because this pre-cancel and user identification was applied in a single step. That's what the word integral means. And so there are, are, are integral hand stamps, integral typesets, uh, but these are integral hand stamps. And so let's actually bring up the picture that shows everything. And way down at the bottom, there's actually more than one page of these. So let's, let's point this out. Way down at the bottom are the pictures of these. One of the things that is a major advance in the eighth edition catalog, and I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that T.G. Rekoff was really, really responsible for this. Uh, I know that he talked quite a lot, a lot about this when we were preparing the eighth edition catalog. It's a huge improvement with the date ranges for the usages of these things. And you'll see that the date ranges are gonna be extremely helpful in determining which ones of these are which. So this first one is July, 1938. And it does seem to match the general layout of this one pretty well. Now it's a $15 type, which isn't, isn't too bad. Now there is something special about July 38. You might wonder, well, why is there just, just this one month in this, this, hand, this uh, hand stamp dated uh, pre-cancel. Well, it's because in June of 1938, the, the post office decided that there was too much fraud going on and that pre-canceled sheets of stamps were making it out from the users themselves, maybe Sears Roebuck or Montgomery Ward or anybody or hundreds or even thousands of other users of, of these pre-cancels. And so that they, the, the post office invoked this emergency decree, which caused a lot of scrambling and, and uh, some crazy responses uh, that had to be in place by July, 1938. That was the first month where the, the date had to actually appear there and the cancel itself could only be used not only from Sears and Roebuck, which identified the user, but within, uh, they, they gave you a little bit of, of grace period just after the end of July 38, but basically, I don't know what it was, maybe 10 days or something they had to be used within that time frame. So if someone showed up in November of 30, 38 with this, this, it would be a fraudulent usage. And that was, that was the reasoning behind it. And, and these dated uh, devices or dated uh, cancels uh, lasted for a long time, out until the 1970s actually. So anyway, let's look at this. So if we look at this, the top example, the July 38 here, this certainly looks like a, a good candidate. And thanks to TG and, and his, uh, trusty um, co-collectors, Gene Byers and Jim Her Herstein, uh, we see that the next one, which looks a little bit similar, and it doesn't have the hyphen and so on, but, it, but it's precluded immediately because it, it only, its date range is August 38. And then this next one is August 42. And there's actually more of these on the next page. And we see that 43 and 53 and 62. Okay, so it's none of those. Let's go back. So 
this first one for sure is our nice $15 type. It's the July 38 example. So let's look at the second one. The SRC is not real uh, prominent here, but that's the SRC and it's August of 42. Well, guess what? Uh, this one would be not August. Well, wait a minute. This, so what's the difference here? <laughs> yeah, this is an example of forest and trees. Here are two of them that seem to overlap the August 42 timeframe because this goes from 38 to 44. This one goes from August 42 to July 53. What's, so how do we tell them apart? Well, stand back and take a deep breath because the year is two digits on this one and four digits on that one. There's the difference. And so this August 42 one is conclusively um, L7 IHS. And similarly, we don't need to beat this to death, but this last one is September 41, just two digits. It's gotta be the L6. So even those are not all that difficult to figure out. Sometimes the cancel itself is a little indistinct in some of these. And that's, that's a generic problem, of course, with pre-cancels is there are times, for example, if you're looking desperately for the comma at the end of some town name, but the cancel is off the stamp <laughs> and, the, and the part with the comma, it isn't showing, well, you're, you're toast. You, there's probably nothing you can do about it unless there's a little piece pick, uh, peeking out from the one uh, to the left of it. Okay, let's hide this one. Let's go look at Highland, California. What's interesting about Highland, California? Okay, so Highland, California, we have um, two types with the state spelled out and two types with the, that are the high range vinyl types with the state as two letter abbreviations. So we exclude those. So uh, since I've got both of them here, this is gonna get a little simpler. I'm not gonna drag you, torture you completely to death here, but um, so which one is the 729 and which one is the 812 here? Because they are in fact different. Well, you kind of have to sit and study this. One of the things that's helpful, first of all, the, the uh, size of the type and the distance between the lines is going to be the same. So don't, don't waste your time on that one. You'll find that the 812 indeed is a little bit more of a condensed typeface. And the 729 is a little bit more expanded. And partly because the 812 uh, condensed typeface is condensed, look at the L, for example, which, which is nice because we get it in all these examples. The L has a little uh, bottom bar that's kind of short and it's a little longer in the 729. But look look over here at the examples. The L in California and also the L in Highland, well, I got two of them. Uh, the L is a little bit short on this one and noticeably longer over in this one. So all other differences, I mean, there's not many other differences here. Uh, the, the, I think you could convince yourself that this one's a little more compressed typeface but the, the, the giveaway is, is the shape of, of the letters and the letter L helps, helps us a lot in this case. You don't, don't always get the benefit of that letter, but it's, I'm trying to train you with uh, what sort of things to pay attention to and, and hopefully you'll, you'll find that those differences. Okay, so, that, so the left one is the 729, the right one is the 812. Okie dokie, what do we got here? What sort of mystery do we have here? Oh, it's the other two highlands. So these are, one of them is an 839 and one of them is the 841. So the question is, which one is which? Which one is the uh, narrower, little more compressed typeface? Which one is the larger, uh, taller typeface? And again, there's not much difference. So let's look, at our, let's look at the stamps, first of all, to convince ourselves that they're different. You might look at some of the letters here. Actually, all the letters show some difference. The CA on the half center here is noticeably bigger than the CA on the two center. Uh, the shape of the, G, not the shape so much, but the size of the letters pretty much across the board on the, uh, the town name are bigger on the left, left hand stamp. So which one of these 839s and 841s would, would you suspect are which? And now keeping those things in mind, 
the 839 really does present itself as a little bit larger typeface. I think actually, if you look at, let's me at, at the risk of, um, let's see, I'm not sure where my document went. I probably closed it. All right. It turns out that if you look in the document that is the introduction there, it, I believe that it says that the 841 type is 2.5 millimeters tall and the 839 type is three millimeters tall. So I believe, and I can be corrected if I'm wrong here, I believe there's a tiny little half millimeter difference. I have to tell you though, and, and you're probably accusing me of this, it's a lot easier to have both, both of them here to compare than if you've only, if you're out there in the desert by yourself and you've only got one. But uh, at least it gives you a guidance about how to think about some of these things. Let's hide that one. Let's go, we're, we're getting there. Hang in there, everybody. Okay, this one's a little easier. I just wanna uh, point out uh, something about this. So I'm gonna go back to Hollister. O-I-L-I-S-T-E-R. Not too many Hollisters. Oh, we got a $90, $90 type. I'm sorry, I don't, I do have the $90 type, but I'm not gonna show it to you here. Um, okay, so just in case we are hoping against hope that one of these is the $90 type, it isn't because that's a 466 that is got the, got the tall uh, typeface and neither of these. Now, but these, these look sort of similar and they're definitely not the one way over on the right. They're definitely not the vinyl 839. So one of these is a 704 and one is a, is a 721. Uh, it is pretty obvious which is which. The one on the left is the 704. Now, one of the reasons that I bring up the 704 here and I wanna talk about about it for 30 seconds is that for some mysterious reason, the, seven, the 704s are super common, but for some mysterious reason, there's hardly any good examples of them. They either, they look garbagey like this one, or they're extremely light and um, they're not applied with, with good inking. I mean, there are some, and you may have some if you really search, but so many of the 704, it's almost one way to recognize the doggone type the 704s just, just don't present very well. And so, but on the other hand, they're, you can see them, if you will, from a, the galloping horse again, because the spacing is very characteristic. Pretty big spacing at the bottom, um, rather tight town to state spacing and pretty good spacing at the top. Notice, by the way, an interesting thing going on here with the example, our, our one cent green, is that that guy got over inked. And you can see that in the bulgy line up here, there's just too much ink. And you can see that it just sort of fills in the characters here. I mean, you can read it pretty, pretty well, but uh, anyway, this one is, is over ink. That's why it looks like that. And this one, on the other hand, is wider spaced and uh, a little bit less spacing below that point. And you see that fits the, the 721 style, okay? So that, there was nothing real controversial about that one. Okie dokie, we're getting close to the end here. Okay, let's look at Gustine. And Gustine is a little town in the Central Valley. Uh, used to be a little farming town that was way to heck out in the boonies. It's now a place where people live and commute into Silicon Valley, gosh help them. Uh, it's a long, tough commute over the Altamont Pass from Gustine. Anyway, uh, why am I talking about Gustine? So here are the Gustine types. We're getting good at this now. Um, we can quickly, sorry, I keep mousing the wrong stuff here. We can quickly eliminate the 839 from consideration because it's a two letter, it's a high, high numbered 800 type with the two letter state abbreviation, no punctuation. And so we're left with a uh, relatively wider uh, typeface in the 729 and a somewhat compressed typeface in the 819. So do e any of these meet those criteria? Well, I think we're, it's pretty clear that the one on the left, the half center is the 729. The letters are, are spaced a little bit nicely there. They're, they're um, uh, not tall and compressed uh, in comparison with the 819. Again, the 819, the letters are definitely a little bit taller and uh, there's a, a bit more compression. Once again, if you've only got one of these two stamps, it's gonna take a little bit more time. 
you know, one of the things to do here, and I, I, I'm not going to show it to you, but but I have done in my collection, is uh, I have a reasonably good collection of, of cheap California types. In fact, I've drawn a lot of these examples from that collection. And what I, I do, if I am holding up a single stamp, and I've got one of these that, that I'm not real clear what it is, is I think it might be a 729. I look up in the database all the 729s in California, and then I go looking. So let's show you how you do that. You get rid of the Gustine part of this and do 729 here. And let's say you've got a, a fairly decent collection of seven, goodness gracious, there's 116 towns with the 729. Well, take your candidate stamp and page through your collection. You may not even have very many of these, but when you, when you get to a 729, it's either gonna look a lot like your example or it's gonna be different. If you had that four cent, Lincoln there, and you were comparing it against the, all the 729s in the collection, you'd, you'd conclude immediately it wasn't the same, it wasn't the same cancel. The, the spacing and the letters and everything are different. So that's actually a good way to handle this if, you, if you've got a, a collection of, of cheapies, like, like I do. I specialize in cheapies. All right, uh, down to the second to last one. Hang in there, folks, we're getting there. Granada Hills, what do we have for Granada Hills? Okay, let's clear this query and do, I'm going to go grand um, asterisk California and manage to <laughs> only find one that starts with grand. Um, I just used the wild card there. That's a subject for a different Zoom presentation. Let's look at the Granada Hills types, see if our little candidates here match any of those. All right, so again, I have to really go down close to this. Uh, the one on the left is spelled out with punctuation. And so the one on the left, the one cent uh, Liberty, the, the, Washington, the one cent Washington Liberty there uh, has got to be an 807 because the other two do not have the state spelled out. Okay, so that eliminates those. Then we have 846 and 853 and again, the 853, this is a pretty easy one actually. The 853 has got a really compressed typeface in the in the town. And so you disqualify that and you've got a nice match for 846. Okay, onward. 846 on that one. And let's let's do our last example. Now I'm gonna let you off the hook. Okay, Garden Grove. Shall we take a chance with um, the wild card again, this is fun. Let's try guard. Oops, we got Gardena and Garden Grove. Well, you know, you don't need to keep uh, restricting this to, to just get the, the, the Garden Groves because if you actually select in one of the Garden Groves as opposed to the Gardena, you'll see down at the bottom here, it knows that you, you selected a Garden Grove row. And so it's not gonna get confused. So I can go ahead and just look at the Garden Grove cancels. And what do we have here? Well, so first of all, the four cent Lincoln from the Liberty series is really beautifully printed. Let's return back to our beginning discussion of the difference between printed and, and hand stamps. It's beautifully printed, very dark and contrasty. So you've got to have a strong suspicion that it's a printed type, which would be in the 200 range. Well, we've got one in the 200 range. It's that 259 that you can see there. But before we rush to, to conclusion, we've got a 704. Now, remember what I said about 704s. There are very few of them that are printed well. In fact, most of them are awful. Um, not just slightly blurry, but not too good. And so that really argues against this being a 704. There are some cases where uh, within a, a, a town, I don't know if this would quite qualify, it probably does. Um, the only difference between the types is the crispness of the of the printing. And so in this one here, I, I'm just out of hand disqualifying the 704. It can't be a 704 because we've got that 259 and by goodness, it looks like a really nice printed example. So that's it, done deal, that's a, that's a 259. Now the other one is obviously a different thing altogether. It's none of the ones in the bottom row, those are expensive exotic types, a couple of them are very expensive. So what do we have left? Well, we don't have much left here actually because 
uh, we've talked about everything except the 471 and the 486. And the 486 has got serifs in upper and lower case. Okay, so I'm concluding, I'm, I'm touching down for a soft landing here. I'm concluding on this one saying, you know, you may be tired from looking at all these, but this is an easy one. This garden grove is, by goodness, a 471. So I hope that this has been somewhat helpful in terms of how you approach this. Uh, I kind of like this style of looking through some of these examples like this. There's endless examples. There's L types and there's other uh, hard to distinguish ones. I didn't want to get into the crazy ones where you need wild cards where you can't even read the precancel. That's a whole different topic. And honestly, that's that's not at the center of precancels. Uh, those that's helpful and, and this program assists you with the wildcards, but that's not the reason uh, for doing this. And you can get so far, just set those aside. If you can't read it or if it's impossible to distinguish, put them in a pile and, and do them later. There's so many of them that are easy to do and, and I've tried to give you the techniques for doing that. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. Anyway, uh, good luck with your pre-cancels and thanks a lot for joining this.